Hello, welcome to day 118 of my art development series. If this is your first time here, my name is Angela Wren, and this is a series that I'm doing where I document my everyday art practice and how I think about growing as an artist and practicing as an artist. So today I did an exercise that I've been talking about uh, quite frequently. So if you go back over the last two weeks at least, I have been doing this particular exercise, which is my five minute head block in exercise. Um, and the reason I wanted to do this is because I'm currently taking a course at the Art Students League of New York, and we begin every course by doing four five minute head drawings from life. And when I first started doing it, it was something that I was really struggling with. Like I really felt the pressure of the five minute timer. And even though I'm really comfortable with portraits, I was always struggling to get through them. And it kind of brought me to a point where I said, okay, there's something here that I need to try and solve. Um, given how comfortable I am with portraits and how much I love drawing portraits, I shouldn't be struggling this much under the five minute timer. I know it's a short period, but nevertheless, I shouldn't be struggling to that extent. So what I've been doing recently is I've been practicing extensively this exercise. So what I'll normally do is uh, there's a Pinterest board that's linked below uh, that was created by Chris Legospi and I'll find three or four of those photos and then time myself sequentially five minutes for each of the drawings. And the idea is that I'm trying to learn or practice a few things. First of all, quick drawing um, shows you a little bit where your weaknesses are. So when you're under the timer of five minutes, you really have to rely a lot on your innate skill and your subconscious skill. You don't have a lot of time to correct things. Those first initial marks, those intuitive marks are really the ones that you have to rely on. Um, so what's great about quick draw is that you really start to understand quickly where are my gaps and what are things that I don't understand. Uh, the second thing that it does is it helps to like kind of define your process. So one of the things that I noticed when I first, first was putting myself under the clock and I had that five minute limit, I would often begin drawing in some very strange ways, like kind of noodling around on the page and not necessarily taking like the Loomis approach or the Riley approach, which these are the ways that I normally draw a portrait. But for some reason, as soon as I had the stress of the timer or the intensity of the timer, these kinds of things would just like go out the window. Um, so what I was really focusing on in this session, and I, I think you'll see it, that it comes across in all three of these uh, portraits that I did, is that I was really trying to emphasize the process. So I started each one very deliberately with a Loomis head approach. And importantly, I got the overall structure and outline of the head with the hair as well, and also the neck and the shoulders to kind of situate the portrait in space. And only at that point, after I had gotten that down and followed my process, how I like to think about it, in terms of like the 2D construction, then the Loomis head construction. And only once I finished that, did I begin to start to attack details that are actually in the portrait. And the nice thing about this is, number one, it's kind of solidifies my process. It gets me better at my process. This like very fundamental part of getting down on the page, the structure of the head, um, it, it really reinforces this aspect. So that's the number one thing that's really great. The number two thing that it does is it has made me so much better under the five minute timer. When you kind of slow down and you focus on your process, you can take two and a half, three minutes of those five minutes to get the head structured and in place. And then only having two minutes for the details in the inside of the face is actually okay. It's more than enough time. The most difficult thing is getting the structure of the head down and in place. So that means like, you know, if the head is tilted back, am I correctly capturing the center line? Am I correctly capturing the outline of the face and how it would be tilted up with the neck and underneath the jawline and the ear? And then what's the shape of the hair and the head? And once you have all of that in place and, and maybe a little bit of the shoulders, then it actually becomes so much easier. Okay, I know I can draw from the eyes or from the top of the ear up to the eye line, I can get the nose, I can approximate that in, and then the lips, and then, you know, I like to do the, the upper lip and the bottom lip kind of separate. I think about the upper lip as being the upper lip plus the, um, oh, the name is escaping me, but you know what I'm talking about, the little divot that occurs above the lip, and then again, underneath the, underneath the bottom lip. Um, and it's so much faster to put that in once you already have a nice head structure in. So this is kind of like the way that I'm thinking about it and that I'm approaching it. Uh, all in all, I would say that these are like fairly successful um, five minute head drawings. When I add up all the ones that I've practiced on and the ones I've done in class, I'm getting close to 50 of these at this point. Um, so, you know, it's hard to say when exactly you start to really get comfortable with them, but I imagine it's somewhere in the 100, 150 range. So I would say I'm like a third of the way there, half of the way there to really being comfortable with these, uh, which is kind of nice. And I'm keeping them as part of my weekly practice. So right now my weekly practice looks like one day is life drawing, one day is 20 minute 
lay-ins, like the ones that I actually have behind me here. One minute is, or one day is five minute drawings. And then right now, the other four days that I practice are kind of more up in the air, whatever I'm feeling that day or like other things that I want to work on. Could be, for example, anatomy. It could be a portrait. It could be uh, practicing with values. There's many, many different things that I might, might um, look, working with halftones actually is a huge one that I really want to start working on more. But it's kind of varying. But those other three right now are kind of locked in place. So five minutes heads, life drawing, and 20 minute figure lay-ins. Um, so that's, I actually would like to do another video talking about how to set a practice schedule and how to think about practice. Um, but I hope uh, this uh, inspired you to draw today, if you haven't already drawn. And we will see each other again on Monday for day 120, I guess it will be. Uh, so yeah, we'll see each other for that day. Have a great weekend if you're watching this on Friday. Um, otherwise, I will see you then.